Hey everybody, so uh, this week we're going to talk a little bit about how we can read an Excel file in Python. So believe it or not, this is a pretty common thing that I run into all the time as I'm working with uh, businesses to get their data into uh, mainly machine learning algorithms, but we'll talk a little bit more about that. So we want to get a spreadsheet from Excel and we want to be able to open it and read it in Python. We'll do another video about writing and creating um, Excel files. This week we'll be focusing on uh, reading. So let's jump into it here. A few slides. So why would we need to do this? Often business data is collected in Excel spreadsheets. If you've been around business as much at all, you'll find that, that uh, they live in Excel. Um, it's a great tool. Um, great tool for collecting data. Often we'll find data scattered among different types of Excel spreadsheets that needs to be pulled together. That's another reason why you may need to read it using Python. And we're often performing analysis on the data. And as I mentioned before, I'm often doing that to pick up uh, the data for machine learning purposes. The th one important thing to note about Excel is that there's two basic file formats that you'll deal with in most cases. One has an XLS extension, which is basically Excel 2007 and before. And then the XLSX uh, file extensions, which, which is current. Now, um, you need to be aware of this because not all of the libraries will read and write both of these formats. So you have to know what type of data you're dealing with. If you do have a current version of Excel, it will read these older versions and then allow you to save those back out as the new version. And that may be the easiest way for you to deal with the data, but sometimes you're not able to do that. So. So we have some options for how we can actually read the data from the Excel spreadsheet. Um, one is using Pandas, and Pandas is a, a library that gives us a very extensive data structure and querying capability. We're not going to be looking at that. It's complicated um, to a certain extent, and you need to be up to speed on Pandas to use it. Um, XLS Writer. Um, is used to write XLS X files, but not to read them. Uh, OpenPy XL, uh, it's actively supported. Um, you can read and write XLX, XLS X files, but you won't, you can't read it. And then XLRD is no longer actively supported, but it will read XLS files. So, if you get yourself in a situation where you have to read the older format, you certainly can use XLRD. You'll see a lot of examples out on the internet in doing this um, with XLRD, but that's really not actively supported. And in fact, their website points you over to OpenPy XL. So I'd recommend that you switch over to using that. And so this is what we're going to use, OpenPy XL. This is the website. Um, I'll try to post the link so that you have it. But uh, OpenPy XL, read the docs.io. You can go there and read them. So let's jump right on in here. Let's see, let's just get ex let's just get PowerPoint out of the way. So I have a basic Python program here. Um, uh, it doesn't do anything except just uh, print hello. I have two sample spreadsheets here. I have an XLS and this is a this is a spreadsheet that comes from Microsoft. It's a it's a uh, tutorial for using pivot charts, but we're just going to use it because it's a really simple uh, spreadsheet with a lot of data in it. And uh, this is this is typically what you'd see in a business is spreadsheets like this. So it's not really important to understand much about the data itself or the business problem here, but just that there's a bunch of data in here. You should all understand that uh, columns are denoted by letters. And rows are denoted by numbers. So if I and there's the concept of a cell. So right now I'm highlighting this cell, B3, and that has a value of Germany. Cells have formats. Um, they can have calculations. Uh, the OpenPy Excel will support that plus charts and all other kinds of things that you'll have in Excel. This is going to be a really simple example of how we can just access the rows, actually access the sheet, the worksheet, and you could have multiple worksheets, 
access the rows in the sheet and then access particular cells in a row. Or we can always refer to the cell directly by the letter and then number designator, the column and row designator. So um, I have this file saved as an XLS and XLSX. And the reason I did that is to show you um, some of the issues when you're trying to access the older file format. So the first thing we'll do is just simply um, open Pi Excel. Uh, I'm using PyCharm again. I've included the spreadsheets in my project just to make it easy. Um, so when I get to the part where I'm actually loading these, um, you may, you'll need to change your path accordingly. And then what we're going to do is just say, well, we want a workbook, and we can get that by calling load workbook and giving it the file name. So in our case, it's financial space sample dot xlsx. Again, we're going to go after the, the current modern version, and then we'll look at the older version. And, and then what we'll do here is just say print workbook. So now we have the, the current workbook, and we'll just print out the list of sheet names. And again, let me open up this spreadsheet. So the sheet name is this sheet one down here. So if I had multiple sheets, like I could have another one here, and it could have another name, like some name, like that. So now we have two sheets in this spreadsheet, in this workbook. We have two, two spreadsheets, and one's called sheet one, and one, one's called some name. Okay, and so let me go ahead and save this. And I think I should be able to leave this open while I'm running it. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, try this out. So let's run this. And so here you see the list of names, the list of sheet names. And sure enough, it gave us both of those. So next, what we want to do is go get the current worksheet. So we can get that by name or by position. We'll get it by name because often um, people have built Excel logic based on the name. So you'll have to decide if it's safe um, to rely on the name rather than the position. But they can also move the position of the sheet around and if you call it by name then it's going to go get it no matter what position it's in. So I'll explain the code here in just a minute. We already know that uh, sheet names is a list of our sheets, our sheet names. So what this is going to do is say, give me the current worksheet based on the name. So I get that by simply uh, accessing the, the workbook, has a list of sheets in it. And if I pass in the name, it'll go retrieve that. So this will get me to the current worksheet. And then a cell, uh, let's just go after some cell in the current worksheet. So current worksheet... And let's go after B3, which we know has the value Germany in it, like this. And then what we will do is simply do, uh, let's print the, the cell value. So a cell dot value. So let's just do that much. So what we're doing is we're loading the current Excel file into this workbook object. We are then calling the, uh, we're getting the current worksheet in that workbook. So now we're on sheet one. And, um, and then we are getting this, this particular cell and then we're going to print the value. So let's go ahead and run this. We should see Germany. And sure enough, we do. 
Now, cells have types or formats associated with them, so one thing I want to do is show you what it looks like to, what the type looks like. So let me actually just copy this down. And we're going to do um, number format. So you can go look at the OpenPyXL documentation for all of the different things that you can do with these cells. <coughs> But let's go ahead and run this. And what this tells us is that the, the format of the cell is general. And if we go into Excel, and we go to B3, and we right-click and we select Format Cells, what you'll notice is it's set right here to general. So these categories that come back from the format is what you're getting when you do that. Why is that important? Because often you want to know that you're dealing with numbers or you want to know that you're dealing with a particular format. So that's how you can do that. Okay, that's pretty that's pretty straightforward. So what happens if we want to iterate through the rows? So we can say we can do something like this. We can just do a stand a, a standard um, we can do a standard iteration. And there is a rows collection that hangs off of um, our current worksheet. So this is the way we can iterate through every row in the worksheet. And we could just print current row. So let's just see what that does. And this is going to dump a bunch of data because there's like 600 rows in the spreadsheet. But let's go ahead and run this real quick. So this is what this collection of cells um, look like, by, or the collection of rows look like, and then you can see the data inside each one of them. So this is A701, and so sheet 1, A701, and sheet 2. So in other words, these are cell objects, so the, we'll then have to go ahead and dig into those. So we would do that by doing something like this. We can say for current cell, in current row and we can do this print and let's just dump out the current we'll basically do the same thing we did up here so current cell number format and that's too many periods let's fix that Followed by, we'll just put in a colon. This is just to show you that you can access all of this data is really all I'm doing here. And then let's just take, get the current cell value. Now, if the current cell is a string, you don't obviously don't need to cast it to a string. But because we don't know what values we have in here, we're going to have to do that. And then if you don't know this Python trick, it's kind of interesting. If you don't want to have a carriage return, um, printed. So for example what we want to do is basically just print um, the format colon value and then the net and then um, a space which is what this will do and we could change this to a comma and we'll do that to show you what what that does and and it'll just print it all out. So it's going to print something similar to this but instead of being the cell objects It'll be the current cell number format colon the value. And it'll just keep doing that till it gets to the end, and then it won't do the carriage return line feed. It won't go to the next line. Um, and we're doing this across one row, so at the end of the row, what we want to do is just go ahead and print out an empty string, and that will cause the carriage return line feed to happen. So let's run this. So here you can see the entire row printed. And then you can see the the type and the value type value. Now what you'll notice here is um, you'll see some formatting going on because there's some specific formats that are there. So you can have this type of regular expression formatting going on. 
red regular expression ish I should say and then we could separate all these with a comma if, if you wanted to by simply putting a comma in there now um, you may often be reading CSV files uh, character separated value files and instead of Excel files and that's you can use some different libraries to do that. You can read those directly into NumPy or or Pandas as well. But I wanted to give you the I wanted to give you some information about how you could go after native Excel files so that you didn't have to convert those to CSV or anything like that. Here's the OpenPy um, OpenPy Excel document, and they've got some nice tutorials out here. Now, they also teach you about writing a workbook, and I'm going to do that using a different tool, but you could certainly you can certainly use this as well. But there's all kinds of things in here that you can do. It's a very nice library. Um, they've done a great job on it, and it makes it really easy to go access Excel data. So I uh, hope this has been useful to you. Please uh, like and subscribe. If you haven't done that already, that helps keep these going. And next time we will talk about writing our own Excel from Python. So that's really interesting because often what you want to do is do, uh, do analysis. Maybe you've got some machine learning running that's producing results. And then you want to turn that into Excel, an Excel sheet, be able to hand it to the business so that they can understand uh, the data in an easy manner. <coughs> so uh, that's it for this one. We'll see you next time.